Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I say this, I'm talking on a college campus and I am sort of presently living. And I'm presently living here for a lot of reasons. I came here for a different reason that I'm presently living here and I'm going from here for different reasons that I came here. Isn't that interesting how life changes within a year? But what I'm talking about is sort of different today. What we can see behind me is a restaurant. I eat there, well, at least this week here, every day. And when I go there, I sort of expect to not be monkey with. I sort of expect to be okay with it. And I sort of expect that the employees will get to know me because I want to be a regular consumer here. When I'm talking, I'm talking about the life of a man. That a life of a man in singledom is always looking for a good place to eat and a marvelous way to get himself a treat. And openly, they have a marvelous way of getting their cookies, and I don't mind that. But when I go there and I get the same meal every single day, what I'm always marveled at is that a young person there will make decisions for me. I'll go in and I'll provide my desires. I tell them what I want on my sandwich and I expect those that are hired to do just that. But every time I do that and there's a certain person on duty, my sandwich is never quite mine. It becomes something different. It's as if someone is trying to exhibit their culinary skills against my life. Or it's as if they're trying to say, I'm just going to monkey his food because I feel like it and I don't want this old man who probably smells like pee here because of incontinence and problems caused by police or other things that he's dealing with in terms of his needs doesn't get served right here. So that at some point he'll get miffed and at some point he'll leave. The problem is, is with me is that I don't get miffed and I don't leave because I like the food here. What I end up doing is talking to the corporate office to say you need some more training here because young people don't understand the world. That their number one job is to be able to listen clearly and understand what their job is in the world. If you're a food handler, your number one job is not only sanitation, but it's getting someone's order right. Because if you can't get the order right, then your corporate brand looks like a fool in the land. And if they're doing it for more than one people because they're just wanting to be powerful because their life is not in power, that's a ridiculous type of employee that you don't need by the hour. When I'm talking about life, I'm really talking about truth. That in truth, if you can't learn to serve people food, then you don't have any right to do anything else in life. That's my attitude. Food is the number one thing that all people need to stay healthy. And if you work in a shop that has marvelous sandwiches or marvelous soups or marvelous things that keep people healthy, then you shouldn't be monkeying with that. Now there was another person who was really loving and kind and she gifted me some food today and I'm grateful for that. I had my money, I was prepared to pay, but sometimes young girls like to, well, give a little man a little love and I appreciate that. But the other girl did something better, that when she heard I didn't want the, their crumble on it because of my gluten intolerances, she said, hey, do you want some more crackers? And then she added multiple crackers in my bag, a little more than I needed and a little more than the soup needed, but she almost made it actually right, that I discovered that her idea about the number of crackers for that soup was absolutely right. And that was right for me. It might not be right for someone else. And if I didn't finish those crackers, I might have given them to some squirrels or I might have given them some, to some birds because I'm a pagan priest and I feed and I love on our world.